Pattern predictions here at the One Degree Outside Weather Network. Meteorologist Matt Noyce, this is the explanation behind the forecast over the next two weeks. If you just want the forecast for the next 14 days, you can grab that anytime for anywhere in the world from our app. Absolutely. One Degree Outside Weather, App Store, Google Play, five stars, totally free and waiting for you. Same thing with our streaming network. Did you know New England now has a weather channel? We sure do. It's our own weather network. It's at OneDegreeOutside.live on the web or on your smart TV. Open up that YouTube app and do a search for one degree outside network. All right, let's start out with a hemispheric view. Look at the whole northern hemisphere, why? Well, because you know, as we've been doing in pattern predictions over the past couple of weeks and in the monthly forecast when we're leading into October, we've been looking at the fact that cold and snow has been amassing in Siberia. Well, the next part of this is interesting because you do keep getting these energetic disturbances to break off and form these upper level storms. And we've got another one at the middle of this week coming up. And then it looks like we get a little bit of a break that tries to build in pretty large ridge that comes all the way up to Hudson Bay, throw warmth all the way up into central Canada, ends up putting a little break in the action for us here at home. But notice what's going on farther off to the west. Still have the cold that's uh, built up in Siberia, but it starts to bleed over into Alaska. This gets really interesting because, you know, I've always talked here over the past several weeks about the fact that you want your first building block, if you want a decent winter in the northeast, to be cold and snow building in Siberia. Ideally, you want it to build into Alaska next. And what's going to happen here over the course of the next several days is we do get more and more cold disturbances digging down through Alaska, making powerhouse storms in the Gulf of Alaska, especially as we get out, let's say, toward the end of next week and the end of the month. And this is going to allow the snowpack to build in Alaska as well. Notice another big one as we get out toward November 2nd and 3rd. Right here at home, look, it's not a direct and immediate correlation that you get the cold to come in, but typically when you look at the wave pattern, if you get a big dip, a big trough out in the Gulf of Alaska, you're going to get a ridge and you're going to get a trough from the Great Lakes to the Northeast. So this does open the door to more shots of cold air. And yeah, we probably will get our first snowflakes in the mountains of northern New England here over this period as well. In fact, there's a few different ways that we do it, right? If you look at the jet stream pattern, you say, well, okay, this is what you would expect coming over the next couple of days. You get the big trough, that reinforcing disturbance that comes in at the middle of this week. I talked about the ridge that builds in, and here it is coming over portions of Minnesota, reaching all the way up into central Canada. Then you say, now, wait a minute. So as we go out, into the end of the month on Halloween, it looks like we get kind of a mild break in things. Are we setting up for another kind of moisture infused storm? It's probably going to start to peel away. What happens is you kind of reload the trough across the Great Lakes. But the idea here is that you're opening the door to a larger trough that can develop across the Northeast United States as we head not only to the end of the month, but particularly the beginning of November. And this should put you near or cooler than normal on temperature. And again, as disturbances come by, raise the chance that you can get at least some amount of snow showers or lightly accumulating snow across some of the mountains, right? When we look at precipitation, finally, again, we've got it on the map. We did this with pattern predictions last week. We're doing it again. And you've got a couple of ways that you do that. One is going to be at the midweek disturbance this week. The next is going to be with multiple disturbances that come in as you try to establish that trough going into next week. Interestingly, predicted snowfall actually shows up mostly in the Rocky Mountains. However, there again may be a little bit in the way of some light snow that could fall in the high terrain of New England. I won't zoom in only because really there isn't much to look at. It's not a lot that's predicted right now. But when you look at the chance of precipitation, you see all this coming together. And this is what you're going to see in our app. So I want to just let you know what you're going to be watching for, okay? As we go through the middle of this week, you've got that disturbance we looked at. There's the ridge building in, and that's why the chance of precipitation goes down. And here's the big trough trying to expand across the northern and northeastern United States, increasing the chance of precipitation going into the end of next week. And at the same time, with the temperature falling, increasing the chance that you might be able to get a couple of mountain flakes as well. I think it's interesting, over the next few days into the end of this week, it's cold corners, the northeast and the northwest. As we go deeper out and you get that ridge building in, we kind of lose our status on that, don't we? Mostly it's the northwestern quarter of the country that goes into the cold spilling down through the Rockies. Notice as we get deeper into that kind of expanding trough, though, heading out into the beginning of November, the cold expands and follows suit. So more of the northern tier of the country gets into that cool air. And down go the temperatures as a result, settling to what would be cooler than normal temperatures really we should be about 57 to 59 going out through the second part of this period and we're not quite there very stable though once that pattern gets in place 
Same thing with overnight low temperatures, very stable. And you can imagine if this is a New England average, some of northern New England will be dipping below freezing on a number of the nights that are ahead in the next two weeks. If you want more on the kind of deep dive of weather, if you're an enthusiast and you love this stuff, you may want to be a member. Membership.1degreeoutside.com, worth checking out and certainly a way to support the mission. And we appreciate all of you who do that. That's how it looks for now in Pattern Predictions. Look forward to seeing you again in just a little while at the One Degree Outside Weather Network.